Hi there, travelers. Um, I am coming to you today. Jessica Adams sent a shout out on, on Twitter about a card for Melbourne in Australia. Now, there's a lot happening there. Um, there has been the earthquake. Uh, last year it was fires. Uh, you are being locked down again. This is like the sixth lockdown. There are people marching in the streets, the uh, protesting vaccinations. A lot of the young people want vaccinations and can't get them. Um, and so this is a, 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 a very fraught time and not just in Melbourne, but all around the world. I was watching BBC, you know, there are Polish migrants trying to get to um, England. We have Haitian refugees and migrants on our shores trying to come across the Rio Grande River. Um, there are people and women in Afghanistan who are trying to sneak across borders. Uh, the Russian people uh, can't get any information about opposition candidates as they vote. Um, you know, countries in South America are their economies collapsing. So there, there's a lot of upheaval all around the world, right? But I wanted to specifically look at Melbourne because Jessica asked me to do this. And I think the first thing that I want to say is if you haven't noticed, there's a correlation between a volcanic eruption and an earthquake. I noticed that when I was really, really young. And I just thought it was something that I saw. But then I read a couple of scientific articles. Can't point them out to you because it was years ago. But it kind of follows that theory. And if you think about uh, a volcanic eruption and what happens, the tectonic plates move. The plates move, right? They shift. Out comes the magna, magma, but that shift radiates hundreds of thousands of miles away. So if I'm not mistaken, there is a there was an earthquake on the Canary Islands. And then at the full moon, there was this large earthquake there in in Melbourne. So I've been saying to you guys for quite some time, you know, Mother Nature's trying to kill us. <laughs> you know, between the floods, the fires, the pandemic, you know, Mother Nature is trying to kill us. The droughts, the the hurricanes, I mean, you know, she's trying to kill us. And so I think the first thing we have to recognize is that the earth is a living, breathing entity. And it was doing that before humans got here. And she's just kind of fed up with us right now. I think as humans, it is is hubris to think that we can control and master mother nature and what's happening now in a roundabout way is she's showing us that no you have absolutely no control over what it is that i do this is my job i am the expert in it and none of you can do it the way that i can do it okay that's first and foremost um so in that vein what we have to recognize, we have to be very, very clear-eyed that this is now the new normal, right? It's not going to go back to the way that it was before ever. But by the same token, anybody who is in the sound of my voice and can hear my voice, you come from strong stock. Your ancestors, way back down the line, have survived calamitous events, fires, earthquakes, floods, wars, pandemics, outbreaks, <laughs> you know, strife, political uh, strife, uh, they have survived. And so if they survive, that means by sheer virtue, you are here now. So you come from strong stock. This is the first thing you should always remind yourself. And you should also remind yourself that no matter how bad you got it, somebody else has it worse. That's the reality of it, right? The card that I pulled for you, Melbourne, is the Queen of Swords. Now, at first, this card didn't make any sense to me because we're not necessarily talking about a person uh, unless that wants to be representative of the country. I don't know. I'd have to defer to Jessica on whether or not Melbourne is a Libra or not. Um, but what I came up with was it wasn't so much about the person as it is the timing of the card. This card represents the timing between the 23rd of September, I'm sorry, the 22nd of September 
and the 23rd of October, a whole 30-day period. So this is about the month of October. In a nutshell, this card is about enduring struggles. Okay? Enduring struggles. We all have them uh, in some way, shape, or form. Karmically, it represents the number 52 or broken down the number 7. It is a card about solitude. Uh, we know that with the pandemic, we have had to uh, isolate or social distance ourselves away from other people. And that's a very difficult thing because we humans are very social creatures. But at a deeper level, this Queen of Swords represents the tearing down of the old to rebuild the new. And if you think about what is happening around the world, uh, from the environment and the climate to financing, to housing, to um, health, to travel, to all aspects of life that, that we, we go through. And we're dealing with inner struggles and inner conflict. I don't know what to think about that. I don't know what to do about that. I highly disagree with that, you know, but again this is about recognizing what you cannot change and so what i like about this queen is the idea that she is above the fray her heads are not at cloud level they're above cloud level she has a clear vision towards the future she's inviting in that vision or she's inviting in that truth your truth is your truth it's not anybody else's truth right <clears throat> And maybe, you know, your truth doesn't fit somebody else's truth. Doesn't mean that you have to be disagree, uh, disagreeable and become bitter enemies. This is the card of Libra. It is about the balance. Right? It is about finding the harmony and the balance. Okay, you see, she's, she's got cherubs, you know, near her butt. <laughs> she's sitting on this throne, holding the hilt of the sword the way she does. It implies power. And authority but when it comes to the power and the authority it is about the power and the authority of you to think your own thoughts to stay above the fray you do not have to engage in the lower confusion if you choose not to I also feel that the crow here is a very um, important symbol in this card God bless Jessica Adams I just love her she told me the only book I'll ever need was this book, and she's right. <laughs> okay. Crows are seen as messengers of the gods and even guides. They guide souls on their last journey as a conductor of the soul. The crow has keen sight, which pierces the darkness so that he is not led astray. I think that's a wonderful thing. What does not being led astray? He's got keen vision, keen perception. He can see for miles. There's a clear view. And so what I think this card is about for Melbourne is that, you know, there's not a lot you can do about some of the things that are happening. So it's really going to come down to harnessing your own personal power and maintaining your own balance. Being realistic being clear-eyed yeah and inviting whatever the future holds being ready for that but being ready for that with a clear vision with clear insight this is about maintaining that balance here we have the the butterfly the symbol of the ego right and so you see the butterfly here is squarely at the base of the throne that she's sitting on. It is about the balance. Now, I do also feel that there is um, a lot going to be for the next 30 days. A, a lot of tense energy, not just for Melbourne, but all over. We have this Mercury-Pluto square that is happening. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, at some point, I think Mars is going to be squaring Venus, which is the ruler of Libra. Mercury is going to be retrograding in the sign of Libra. Partnerships, relationships, open enemies, 
legalities. And when I say legalities, these are laws that will affect you in some way, shape, or form. This could be from lockdown to mask mandates uh, to curfews. Um, so, you know, and so there's a huge conflict happening. People are rising up. People are on the move, right? And we know that at this particular point, movement and travel is not really what we should be doing. But something is urging people on i think it's a very particularly with pluto it is a very um deep deep psychological urge uh but it also brings about issues of power and control power struggles and so <clears throat> you know you can't you know maybe you can join in on the and go out and fight the power. But this is really about harnessing uh, that inner strength, inner conflict, that clear vision, so that you can gain control over your own inner conflicts and inner struggles. This is what you should focus on for the next 30 days. Doesn't mean you can't go out and give a helping hand, you know, to help rebuild, you know, the tearing down of the old to, to rebuild the new. That is a literal and a metaphorical statement. All right, now, I went back and I took a look at Jessica's card and she pulled the high priestess to see what connections that I could find and here's what I what I came up with when I put these two cards together let's see if I can get it right now and can hold it still the water from the gown of the high priestess flows into the card of the queen of swords so we can say that either the water flows downhill or uphill, right? But we could also say that water from this end flows back into the gown or the stream of the high priestess. Basically, it is about the two meeting in between, <laughs> okay? Again, it is about the balance. The most important thing about this card, this high priestess, is the idea of duplication and reflection. Okay, it is about memory. <clears throat> reflection and duplication are essential to the faculty of memory. Right? So, basically what this is about, it is the memory the history and the record of experience. Sit with that for a moment. Feel it. Don't be afraid of it. Right? And then at some point you are come to a clarity in which you can now even if it's only seeing until the next 24 hours, but you can do so with clarity. Okay? Um, that is the message that I have for you, Melbourne. You will be okay. I know it's a fraught, crazy time. You know? But nothing lasts forever. <laughs> Humankind has survived worse events. People have behaved worse than the way they're behaving now. It looks like chaos. I know, it looks like anarchy and chaos. It looks as though the world is going to hell, hell in a handbasket. But it's not the first time that it has appeared that way to humans. And so, maintain your space. Keep the air clear around you. Right? Be cognizant of your thoughts. Don't buy into crap that doesn't fit your truth. <laughs> you know what I mean? And be balanced. That's a hard thing to do. It is a very difficult thing to do. And it just takes practice. You know, nobody's nobody's perfect at anything, right? And so you will get through this, Melbourne. We will all come through this. I know the question is, well, when, when, when? This card says that that's a secret and the timing is unknown. Projecting out. She holds more sway than this female. Right? So we know for a whole 30 days, this is the energy that everybody should be embodying, whether you are male or identify with the male uh, gender. This is about the, the receptive, softer side 
of energy. Getting in touch with who you are, stripping down the bare essence, getting rid of things you don't need anymore. And I, I mean, you know, this could be in a literal sense, it could be in a psychological or an emotional sense or a spiritual sense. You know, whatever that means for you, that if that is your truth, then embody that truth. Figure out what it's going to take for you to stay above the fray so that you can have a clear vision as you move through the month of October. So that's what I have for you. I hope this message helps. And until next time, be well, stay safe, and namaste.